What's up guys, it's Deemer Class and super excited to bring you another player's perspective. We're really excited to welcome Tucker Dordovic as an FCL athlete. been great getting to know Tucker over the past couple years. Excited to take you a little bit behind his eyes and his mindset of how he approaches the game. Tucker, fired up to have you. Super pumped to be an FCL athlete. Awesome. So, Tucker, the biggest thing I think that when kids watch you play, you're explosive, you're dynamic. Um, talk us a little bit about your dodging mindset and how you attack your defender. Of course. So when I first, you know, line up my defender, square him up, whatever it is, um, I want to make sure I can turn his hips, right? I want to get into a position myself where I can get him to open his hips and he has to run alongside of me, or hopefully I beat him and he's running behind me. Uh, but obviously that doesn't always happen. So. Really what I do is I like to, you know, use a lot of change in direction when I dodge. Um, so if I'm, you know, setting up here on, on Coach Deemer, um, as I make my move, you know, here, you know, if, if it's a pull, I might try to get him to open up one way. So as we talked about earlier, I might dodge hard this way. And as I'm coming this way, once I feel like his hips are open and I feel like I can beat him to this, you know, the backside of him, I'm going to plant and come back this way in hopes that he has to open up completely, right? This is going to slow him down. It's going to give me an extra step on him, which therefore hopefully I can get a shot off. If not, the slide's going to have to come um, and I'll, I can move it to X. Awesome. So just back up a little bit and, you know, you mentioned kind of a pole versus a short stick. Mm -hmm. What's the biggest difference for you and how you feel like when you're attacking a pole versus a shorty? And what's a tip for a young guy um, when he's trying to think about assessing that matchup? For sure. So I think it's one, knowing your matchup and two, kind of knowing how you play. Myself being, you know, a quicker guy. Um, if, if it was for some reason a shorty, you know, there are times where, and I, I do this all the time, where I'll do the same thing I would do in a pole. You know, sweep across the middle, roll back, or, you know, maybe sweep across the middle and do a little rocker step and kind of keep going towards the net and hope to get a step on him um, but there are times also in a shorty where I feel like I can kind of just get underneath them with you know one or two little stutter steps so uh, sometimes I'll square them up and I'll kind of you know if it's a short stick I'll walk with them a little bit maybe you know try to get a better angle on the net or get closer to the net without initiating my dodge quite yet and then once I decide to make my move I'm gonna really just try to get him to open up just if, if it's a step it doesn't have to be too much um, but even if it's just a step and once he makes that first little step I'm gonna try to open his hips up and get right off of his back pocket um, and with that, you know, it's just making sure that you know that the slide's coming at your face, but also you're gonna have to get it off quickly, right? We're, you know, we're 10 yards from the net. Um, it's not easy to, you know, just get a step and take a shot. So for me, it's knowing how much distance I have between the net. If I'm, you know, up by, you know, the 35 yard line and I know I'm gonna have a lot of room after my move to, you know, kind of dissect the defense or like dissect where I'm gonna go next with the ball, then it's easier. But here, I, the first thing I try to think of is once I make my move and hopefully get a step on him, where am I going next, whether that's the goal or behind or, you know, a skip or whatever it may be. Right, hitting the single forward, looking through the D. Yeah. Do you have a, a preference? Let's talk about above the goal line. Do you have a preference of dodging from wing, high wing, or up top, or anything you've kind of seen in your career as what's more advantageous? Definitely. I think, you know, when I was younger, you know, my freshman, sophomore years, I really liked coming out of, you know, coming out of the box, you know, coming from the 40-yard line, sprinting at your guy, you know, making a quick move and going. Um, but, you know, through the years, I've kind of liked working these, these wings and kind of into – probably where the 30, the number, like the, the actual 30 yard line number is. Um, and just being around this area, I like to kind of be closer to the net. Uh, I think it can help my quickness a lot, but I also don't mind, you know, we called it a center dodge last year, but starting at the midline and, you know, sprinting at your defender, making a move, getting by him, you know, throwing it forward, whatever it is. Um, but, you know, definitely like being on the wings a lot. It's fun. And I think, you know, being close to the net's always a, a plus, I think. Yeah. How is, um, how is your re-dodging evolved you know you grew up in Oregon um, you know can imagine it got to a point where slides would come so early mm -hmm. you know and you were even talking a little bit earlier about change of speed and things like that you know how has your redodging evolved and how do you think about that part of the game for sure I think just that's something nowadays I try to think about before you know going into the game how do they slide first and then secondly what are like a few things whether it's you know just like bouncing out controlling the slide as they kind of backpedal in hopefully as after they show um, or I did this years ago, but it, it's kind of hard to describe. So like popping out and almost acting like I obviously like to roll back a lot, acting like I'm going to roll back and then kind of coming back down. Hopefully that this matchup stays and the guy reverts back into the crease. Um, but just like utilizing different things, coming up with, you know, th two or three things that I think, you know, against this team would work to kind of hold the slide a little bit. doesn't always happen. Um, 
but just you know figuring out what would work talking to coaches and kind of figuring out what i think would be beneficial for that that game yeah it's funny you mentioned that move i i've always called that like the mj move mm -hmm. and uh there's a great clip of michael jordan like on the baseline starting to look like he's going to dribble and turn back to the outside yeah and then he attacks baseline and slams it and i remember and it's funny you scored that against duke so i feel like some of your <laughs> some of your best games at syracuse uh were against the blue devils where you, you bounce away the slide retreats and then it opens up mm -hmm. that alley um you know i think you know my perspective on redodging too is like just making the defense think that you're doing something you're not for sure you know like r simple rolling away and then boom reattacking underneath mm -hmm. and just a great move that i remember from from your time playing yeah i think the 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 biggest thing for me in the like when I see them sliding is I think it's some people will bounce but they almost do it too late where the slide's gonna come and I think it's like you can almost like use it to set things up like maybe not and we've spoken about this throughout the day but like not going full speed right away where they right. have to come but like making your move realizing you have a step and then like letting him catch back up you know what I'm saying so like that he does show right but he still has time to retreat back rather than they have to show and they switch, then you just end up moving it and it kind of. Let's walk through that because I think that's a pretty cool point you're making. And it's kind of, if you're the Dodger, I feel like, hey, you make your move, you start to get a step. Now, especially for you, like you're a guy who consistently gets a couple yards of separation against a shorty. But if you slow down to like let me catch back up, mm -hmm. you're making it look like he like this shorty's not beat yeah and then you're you're like playing with an advantage mm -hmm. right and you're learning how to play with a step and i think that's such a fascinating concept to learn because you know you were saying it earlier when we were just chatting but you know you always used to go 100 percent. yeah and then you know how has it helped you to like learn how to manage your pace and your speed i think one just playing more like in, at a higher level like obviously when you get to college you have these brilliant coaches who are always, you know, telling you these these things. But I think just realizing that in our sport, like similar to basketball, like you talk about MJ, like it's it's kind of your friend sometimes to like slow it down and like let it come to you more. And I think that's what kind of helps with, um, you know, trying to kind of hold or freeze the slide. Is just like um, I was actually funny. I was talking to a kid at practice the other day, and I, it was I, I now feel like you can with short sticks if you can kind of get into them and almost like not body them in a sense, but like use the chicken wing to like hold the slide like you're almost posting them up on the wing that you can figure out when the slide's going to come right. by like keep like kind of pushing them in towards the teeth of defense but like i don't know it's just like kind of the feel and like figuring stuff out like you know a fifth year in college and i like just thought of that yeah i like figured that out and i've been playing the game for what 20 years so it's like just kind of feel and then figuring stuff out as, as you know yeah well let's talk about um your former teammate at syracuse steven rafis um i played with steven a couple of years for the cannons and mm -hmm. then also uh back in Vale when i yeah. first met him um awesome guy awesome player and uh you were kind of talking about you know some of the ways that he would go out and shoot and think about change of speeds like can you elaborate on that more yeah so i remember my you know freshman or sophomore year at syracuse um steve as you know has some like the best hands that there are and i would see him on the wall all the time doing this these crazy things but we would also have a net in the area where we play wall ball and i would see steven all the time every day he'd put headphones in and he would go like 10 percent we'd jogging around the net and just working on different speeds um that he would play and working on his creativity and that's something i've took from steve years ago is just like you know it's so easy as you get older to get kind of caught up in like this the seriousness of college across and it's kind of fun to just you know put in headphones and like yeah. try different things at different speeds within the you know 10 yard radius of the net and i think obviously it showed in steven's game but i think it helps a lot just with like feel and creativity and and kind of you know take a step back kind of imagine the defense is out there imagine there's a goal in the net imagine you're out there with your buddies throwing around um and i think it just helps with it obviously helps steven a lot but i think it helps with just feel and it's something i tell younger guys all the time can you do that out on the wing area too like you were kind of, of talking about like exaggerating like your bounce move yeah yeah they're kind of similar so there's times when like if i'm practicing by myself i'll kind of like it's not a walkthrough but i'll be going like nice and light and just like kind of imagining that there's people around here re-squaring up my defender bouncing away and then once i feel like it's ready I'll like then I'll start attacking in that and there are times where I'll even get to spots where like I'd probably never really bounce away here most likely especially bounce away and square my guy up to get underneath it's kind of a tough spot considering there's if it's a short stick there is probably going to be a slide um but just like working on little things that could happen things that you know you don't think about when you're going a million miles an hour um but you can do when you're you know going five percent and just kind of enjoying it a little bit yeah my favorite uh 
my favorite Steven move is just his little hesitation mm -hmm. where he's just kind of like you know, yeah. gets that little turn and then pushes and pops like right off that back leg mm -hmm. and then he like he does it so well from up top um you know he was a guy that played attack his whole career and yeah. then came in first year pll crushed it as a midi um you actually just switched last year to mm -hmm. playing attack you're going to be playing attack you said at georgetown again this year oh. how's that transition been for you it's definitely been at first it was definitely pretty weird but as it as, like after last year um, it definitely feels a little more natural now, and, and after a fall, full fall, it feels very natural. Um, I'm fortunate now in, in the way the game's evolved, where you know I probably spend 70% of my time still above the net. Um, it's still fun to go back there, but that's the nice thing about you know playing with just six offensive players nowadays, rather than you know where it's like three and three, um, which is pretty cool. But it's definitely nice to kind of be able to like navigate these wings, whether it's the left or right side, and also go to X and and play back there, which I think is pretty cool and, and definitely can open up some, some new things. What's, the, what's been your biggest takeaway if we walk kind of back here um, and you spend time like learning the attack side of things, what's been your biggest takeaway from a dodging perspective of, that you've had to get used to? Definitely, I think, honestly, it, I, I was kind of shocked that it was this, but when I always thought of attack, I was like, you know, it's it's gotta be not easy to get, you know, people to kind of jump back and forth around the net, but. The defenders are very, very, very good. So just kind of feel it, like really learning how to utilize the net. Like before, I would just do a bunch of change directions, and the guy could almost just sit on one side of the net, and I would finally make my move, and he would just step over or whatever. But realizing, like, hey, like you can kind of toy with them more back here, but it has to be utilized in a proper way. You can't just do a million back and forth and expect them to, you know, you to get a step on them. Just being able to actually use the net to become your friend, whether it's doing like a rocker, the one simple little rocker step and getting them to kind of pick a side that they may not be on or getting them to jump completely over. To me, I thought it was going to be easier than I than I expected. Um, and it's taken some time to kind of, you know, utilize that. Yeah, it makes sense. One thing I'm like curious, because um, part of it is you can dodge directly from behind, mm -hmm. but then the other piece is then you can start widening out and you can attack on angles. Yeah. And uh, you know, one thing I've always thought about, um, and I didn't spend a lot of time back here in college, but as I watch more film, like when you make your uh, like first initial move coming from this like 45, mm -hmm. if you make it and then you angle in towards like the near side pipe. Yeah. So if you hop on D here, you then like can set up this guy right now into the back of the net because mm -hmm. you can pop off now and now you're running him parallel with that yeah versus if you just make your move and you run towards x uh -huh. he can run through the back of the yeah. crease and it's just like learning and understanding that angle play of course and those little things is like what i like last year in the fall i probably would have just made my move and ran and expected him but then i to jump over or whatever and he's just two yards right. above the net. Whereas now it's like little things like that. And even like sometimes since I do play behind, there's times where like maybe I'll get a switch onto the LSM and I'll have the LSM back here. And obviously they're very, very good, but they're not used to playing back here anymore. Right. And so for me, kind of similar to what you just said, is I'll try to get them, I'll take a couple steps this way. And once I get to here, there's times now where I'll try to get almost like S dodge them and get back underneath so they're on my back and their sticks comes this way. And then I'm just looking straight up the field, which is something, you know, a year ago I probably wouldn't have done. But now after like getting to play the position a little bit more, it feels more comfortable. And I can feel like I can set up guys a little, a little bit better. Yeah, no, I, I love that. And I think like, you know, for your game too, you know, you have the sharp change of direction, you know, you have like the straight line speed to like attack. So it's just, you know, like you said, learning the angles, mm -hmm. understanding, and then, you know, so much of it's matchup dependent. Like how much do you think about like when you're preparing for a team, like the guys you might be going against? Is that, does that factor in for you? Or is it sometimes just focusing on playing your own game? For me, I've never been, um, excuse me, I've never been one to kind of, obviously I'll look at, you know, who my defender may be, but most of the time, it's more just being like, what can I do to benefit my team this week? I think it's really easy to get caught up in matches. And, you know, being um, in college, you, no matter who you're going against week to week, they're probably going to be a pretty good defender. And so I've kind of tried to stay away from, you know, really analyzing who it might be because you never know what's going to happen too when you get to the game. It could be a totally different matchup and you prepared all week for one kid and it ends up being a different kid. So for me, just trying to figure out what I can do from to, to capitalize on their team defense rather than just you know, 
the guy that's covering me. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And I, I also feel like one thing that young offensive players always have to learn and go through is like you go from being the guy in high school mm -hmm. to like balling your stick, making a lot of the plays to when you get to college, understanding that it's okay to like draw a slide and just hit the single. Definitely. You know, how has that transition been for you where maybe sometimes you can take the pressure off of not feeling like you have to be the point producer, mm -hmm. but you can get things started. Has that like come up for you? Yeah, for sure. You know, my freshman year, especially like speaking about just like moving the ball. I remember one of my best friends, Brendan Curry and me would play together and he's like the quickest kid ever. Um, and I kind of play this, you know, side to side game where he plays more of a straight speed. We'd always talk all the time that like what we would end up doing is just beating a guy and all we would do, there would be games where we would take like two shots each and we would just bang it to Steve or Nate or whoever was behind the net and they would end up banging to the backside and get a shot or re-dodging and just like, you know, at different times in your career, you're going to be utilized for different things and that was our kind of our thing freshman year it was not, a, I guess you could say kind of a hockey assist, but I think as I've grown older, it's, it's you almost try to have kind of have to get back to that too you know once you become more of a ball handler um just realizing hey you know i am maybe i am a ball handler but there's times where i can just make a move bang into x and, and do right. what i did when i was 18 and, and it wasn't my role to carry the ball right. majority of the game which i think just as you ascend through the ranks of like high school across or college across just kind of it's not bad to revert back to kind of the basics which i think benefits everybody yeah and how about too talk about what you said earlier playing with an advantage mm -hmm. so you know you're, you know you're going to draw the slide you know you're going to commit to throwing it forward uh -huh. but you can still play with that guy exactly get the same they still get the hockey assist or mm -hmm. the two passes away but now you're just being more methodical about controlling that guy actually committing to you for sure i think that's like why i i like kind of this this lower wing area at times is because it's really easy or i, I shouldn't say easy to draw a slide but easy to think okay i'm you know 10 yards from the net i could almost just step in and shoot it but if i can toy with my defender you know for two or three steps get this guy to bite i can either throw it to x or he'll back cut to the back side and you can throw it to him so i think just like as you get older or start to develop realizing like hey like i don't even need to fully beat this guy but if i can just dodge hard maybe i won't even get a shot off and and kind of think you know this i probably can't get a shot off. i'm gonna lose angle or it's not a valuable shot just to get in here okay coach slides and then i bang it here he attacks the back side and scores an easy goal yeah um which is you know maybe something i wouldn't have thought of my freshman year when i had the ball and i was all antsy but now i would think okay i can just almost uses like we were talking about earlier, getting into someone for a second and then just throwing it back. Right. The, these kind of points I think are so key for young players and um, we were fired up to have you work our best in class event this past weekend. We mic'd you up, we'll cue that clip. And one thing I think was awesome that you said, and I want to just hear more about it, you said, I think there's the magnet mm -hmm. on the back pipe. Like, can you explain that concept? Of course. So. Anytime we're dodging from up top, whether it's, you know, a big alley dodge or, or just from the low wing here or the middle wing is just, I see a lot and I used to do this too, is you make your move and it's really, really easy to kind of run with the hashes. Um, and when you get to college, you know, everybody's kind of used to being um, the guy dodging all the time. And, and that's not always the case. And you have people of all different dodging abilities. And so something that I always kind of thought helped us and that was reiterated to me at Syracuse was just like, make sure you're getting back to the back pipe. Because even if you don't beat them, if I'm running hip to hip with someone and I keep running towards the back pipe, I personally believe, and this is something our coach would talk about all the time, is that you're eventually gonna get an advantage on them. Right. And then if you're not running towards the back pipe, you wouldn't be able to get a shot off. Right. So. Yes. I use the back pipe as a kind of an exaggeration for young guys, but just making sure you're getting towards the goal. Yeah, I mean, it's a good one too. And also the magnet piece, like that gravity of pulling you. Mm -hmm. And if we're over here, like just to even visualize it more, like if I'm on you and you're going right down the hashes, yeah. that hedge on goal line doesn't need to respect you. Exactly. Those goalies are, are gonna make that save. Now mm -hmm. look, I, like you've scored some pretty nice low angle shots, but like we talk about over time, like working for the best ones, yeah. you know, and for the team, it's like, if you commit to leaning in, you're just gonna be more likely to create. Exactly. And, and I just think that's a great point. And so when you when you had that that pointer for the, the younger guys, cause we had a talented group, I'm like, mm -hmm. even a simple thing like that makes a huge difference. For sure. And that's even like, you see Canadian, like some Canadians, like we had Canadians on our team who maybe weren't the best Dodgers, but they were so good at using their body that like little things like that, like they could catch the ball like seven yards and just like be able to use their body and lean into them and get to the backside of the pipe and they would score with ease because they're obviously their hands are so good and they just can control themselves so well. Right. But like 
by no means are they the best athlete or like sprinting by someone, but they can do that like 10 out of 10 times and score a million goals. So I think it's cool for people of all different like athletic um, ranges. Yeah. So one of your, I feel like signature moves is the split roll mm -hmm. or hard roll and, and exploding out of that. Yeah. Um, why is that a move that kind of stuck with you? Is there any players that you feel like you learned that from? And obviously like maybe dodging too. It's for sure. What, what's your skill set? You know, yeah. so talk to us a little bit about that. So when I was really, really young, I would always just go back and forth a million times, like rolling back or almost like that Mikey Powell, like finalizer. I was a tiny kid. who was just like quick, didn't really know much about lacrosse, but as I got older I started watching like Kyle Harrison and he would come out west and he always had a really cool split I thought so I always tried to emulate that and when I was younger I didn't have much of a left hand so I would always try to split and then get I wanted to get back to my right hand so as they opened up I would try to find a spot where I could just completely stop roll back and if I was you know maybe if I was here I'd end up just shooting a step down um, but at times just like setting it up as a as an alley dodge um, and so for me it was more so that you know no one was preaching like get a right and left hand when I was in like sixth grade in Oregon. So I was like, well, I can just do this and it works. Um, obviously now I can use my left hand, but like I, it just feels good. And if, if, if it does work still, like I don't see why not to like, continue to use it. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, it keeps people on their toes and also like it sets up those rocker moves, mm -hmm. right? So then you can, you know, counter it by a little hesitate and go keep yeah. getting top side. You're pretty, two-handed threat so it's it's kind of like a pick your poison mm -hmm. um so it's it's always exciting to watch and i think it's just good for young guys to be like what are your strengths yeah how do you work it into your game and then put that into the context of the team offense for sure i think in like you said work with your strengths like i think sometimes in lacrosse people get so hard or harp on people so hard to be like you have to have a left hand you have to have a right hand but like realistically there are people who only have a left hand and score a hundred goals in a season or only right. have a right hand. So I think like if you can find ways to open up your strengths then like go ahead and I think use that to your advantage. And I think there's times that we get away from that, like I said, but like if you can find something that works for you and hopefully continues to consistently work, like I personally think go for it. Yeah, no, I think that's great advice. Um, one of our sports psychologists at Duke, his name was Greg Dale. Mm -hmm. He said this thing to me like freshman year. I was just struggling because I was coming in and putting so much emphasis on shooting with my right hand, yeah. my offhand. Yeah. And I was working on it, wasn't going, didn't feel confident with it. And he asked me that. He said, you know, what are you doing to work on your strengths? Mm -hmm. Like, what are your strengths? And he challenged me to keep working on those two. And then I felt like when I flipped that investment into that, mm -hmm. like that got better. Yeah. And I also did didn't mentally put so much pressure on myself to score the righty shot, of course. which is like half the battle where you feel that's like you awesome. gotta stick the corner. So uh -huh. I, I can 100% relate to that. For sure. And I think that's like the, like what he said to you about like, you know, continue to work on your strengths. There's times um, when I'll go into like, if I go home and shoot, I'll shoot like four or five times a week. And pretty much every day I shoot, I will do the same thing with both my right hand and left hand, but I, I'm not a lefty player. So one of those days I'll go out I'll just use my left hand. So I'll do all the same stuff I would have done with my right, but I like can emphasize using my off hand one more day. But that doesn't mean like like what you said, you're still working on everything else with with both hands. But I think that's a that's a cool thing that he said that. Yeah, totally. Um, so Tucker is in his fifth year now at Georgetown, just finished up fall ball. How are you feeling for the season? I'm pumped. It's gonna be fun. You know, it's it's cool to be at a a little bit of a different spot. You know, I love my time in Syracuse, but it's fun being in DC as I, I'm getting older and, and just enjoying it. So I can't wait for, for the spring to get going. Awesome, man. Well, hey, appreciate you taking the time. Wishing you the best. Um, make sure you watch Tucker this spring and check out more content on our YouTube pages and Instagram and social media. So thanks for watching.